This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 1094, Self-Acceptance versus Personal Growth, part two, by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com, and I'm your very own personal narrator, Justin Mollick, reading to you from some amazing blogs and books to help you optimize your life. It's Joss's birthday today, a happy birthday to you. She's the host of Optimal Relationships Daily, if you didn't know, and we're giving her some time off because she just had her second baby, so a big congrats on that too and to Lee, her husband, who is my business partner. We're wishing them all the best. And today's episode is sponsored by LaCroix Sparkling Water, an all-natural, environmentally friendly, and flavored water with a hint of fruit essences. Perfect if you want no calories or sweeteners or sodium, but a tastier version of water. Check them out at lacroixwater.com or on your favorite social network at LaCroix Water. That's L-A-C-R-O-I-X, water.com. And today's a continuation from yesterday, so if you're new here, it would be best to listen to yesterday's episode first before this one, otherwise you'll be hearing the middle and end of an article only. But if you're all caught up, let's get right to part two and continue optimizing your life. Self-acceptance versus personal growth, part two, by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. Beyond the linear mindset. This whole situation is basically win-lose, isn't it? You have to compromise somewhere, you can't play the positional growth game full out, and still accept and enjoy every moment along the way, right? Or can you? Let me suggest an alternative paradigm. Instead of rooting your sense of self in your position, which is changeable, what would happen if you rooted your sense of self in something permanent and unchangeable? Stop identifying yourself with any form of positional status and pick something invulnerable instead like a pure concept that nothing in this world can touch. Examples include unconditional love, service to humanity, faith in a higher power, compassion, nonviolence, and so on. I'm certainly not the first person to suggest something like this. Stephen Covey wrote about this in The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. He refers to it as true north. When you root yourself in unchangeable true north principles, You may still measure the various metrics of your life and notice how they change over time, but you won't make them part of your identity. Hence, you keep your self-esteem separate from your particular circumstances. This isn't easy to do. Covey himself has admitted how difficult it is for him personally, but you don't have to be perfect to get results from this paradigm. Even a small move in this direction will reduce the conflict between self-acceptance and growth. Essentially, you'll gain the best of both worlds separating position from identity. By rooting yourself in the permanent, your position detaches from your identity. This makes it possible to unconditionally accept yourself as you are while still courageously playing the positional growth game regardless of the outcome. Self-acceptance and growth are no longer in conflict because now they don't apply to the same thing. You've separated your identity, self-acceptance, from your position, growth. Covey's true north principles are based on effectiveness. Mine are based on fulfillment, so they're slightly different, but there's certainly a lot of overlap between them. For example, one of my principles is service to the highest good of all. This is close to Covey's principle of thinking win-win. Either version of this principle is independent of position. You can be homeless and forgotten, or you can be rich and famous, and you can still do your best to serve the highest good of all and to think win-win. These principles do not depend on circumstances. Circumstances only affect the manner in which you'd apply them. Detaching ego from outcomes. If I were to look at a snapshot of my life right now, I'd rate it as excellent in terms of its positional, i.e. growth-related aspects. I received 320,000 visitors and 664,000 page views last week, and I topped my one-day AdSense record too, $330.69 on April 12th. On Thursday, I did a magazine interview. On Friday, I did a nationally syndicated radio interview. And on Saturday, I joined the Las Vegas National Speakers Association and went to my first meeting. Later today, my family and I will enjoy an Easter picnic in the park with some friends and I'll spend the rest of the day having fun and relaxing. Positionally, everything is wonderful, lots of higher highs. But if I let my self-esteem and identity get too wrapped up in these external outcomes, I'll be setting myself up for ultimate failure. When the pendulum swings the other way, and of course it eventually will, I'll get frustrated with my less than stellar performance. And from there, it's a slippery slope into the realm of ego-driven attachment to outcomes. 
What will happen when my traffic or income takes a nosedive at some point? I'll either resist accepting my present situation or I'll withdraw into a shell and settle for mediocrity for a while or I'll put on a fake front and pull an Enron. None of these are good solutions. The solution is upstream to keep identity and position as separate as possible. I find that a couple practices help a lot with this, journaling and meditation. I've been doing both for many years and these practices help me keep my internal compass aligned with true north principles that aren't going to change within my lifetime. I keep my sense of self rooted in permanent concepts like service, awareness, and peace. Those concepts don't change, so my deepest sense of self remains fairly fixed. That makes it easier to fully accept who I am in every moment. But on the positional side, I'm still able to enjoy the pursuit of positional growth and play full out without settling for underachievement. If I stray from these practices for too long, more than a few weeks, I gradually fall out of alignment with true north. I eventually get sucked back into the prevailing social climate that loves to identify people with their positions. For example, while I was doing my polyphasic sleep experiment, Some people started identifying me with polyphasic sleep, and that's okay until they start becoming too attached to that person-position pairing. Positions are always temporary, so it's best not to become overly attached to them, whether in yourself or others. It would have been problematic if I fell into the trap of letting my ego become overly attached to my position as a polyphasic sleeper. The ego resists positional changes it perceives as negative. It doesn't like to be wrong, so I might have clung to polyphasic sleep even when it didn't serve me as well as monophasic sleep. Have you fallen into any person-position pairing in your own life? Do you derive your sense of self from things that are changeable and vulnerable, such as your income, your job title, your relationships, or any other form of status? How much energy are you investing in defending those positions out of fear? When you loosen your attachment to positions, you don't have to defend them. I disliked when people started giving me labels like the internet king of polyphasic sleep, not my words, because if you're a king, then you've got a kingdom to defend. People like to attack kings simply because of their position as kings. I'd rather not be perceived as a king of anything positional since I don't wanna spend my time defending temporary positions that are eventually going to crumble away. Trying to defend your position as if it were the real you is a losing battle. None of the positional aspects of your life are going to endure, so it's best not to become too attached to them. Enjoy them while they last, but don't seek yourself in them. When you root yourself in something permanent, then your sense of self is effectively untouchable. Your position can be attacked and you can still defend it if you like, but you won't feel irrationally compelled to defend it out of fear. You won't feel you're being personally attacked when your position becomes vulnerable. Enjoying inner peace. What I'm really getting at here is inner peace. When you keep your sense of self away from third dimensional positions, your position can roller coaster all over the place and you can still be at peace on the inside no matter what happens. You don't have to withdraw and be totally passive. You can enjoy being an ambitious overachiever and set and achieve goals like a maniac and have a great time doing it. But meanwhile, you don't seek your identity in those fluctuating outcomes. If you find yourself succumbing to the ego position trap, Add some practices to your life like meditation, journaling, time with kids, time in nature, and so on. This will help you reconnect with what's most sacred to you, your own version of True North principles, and keep your identity separate from your position. Then you can experience drive without attachment, ambition without ego, and peace without passivity. You just listened to part two of the post titled Self-Acceptance Versus Personal Growth by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. Thank you again to LaCroix Sparkling Water for sponsoring this episode. If you're drinking sugary fruit drinks or sodas because you don't like plain water, consider making the switch to LaCroix Sparkling Water, a healthier alternative for you and your lifestyle. My fridge is stocked and every time my business partner Lee comes over, he's been having a different flavor. He's loved all of the ones he's tried so far and there are 14 LaCroix flavors like tangerine, lemon, and peach pear. There's also grapefruit, lime, passion fruit, and more, including six LaCroix Curate flavors like kiwi sandia, melon pomelo, and a lot more. They're gluten-free, vegan, and non-GMO, and no calories, sweeteners, or sodium. You can check them out and see a full list of retailers on their site. That's lacroixwater.com. And join their community on your favorite social network at LaCroix Water. That's L A 
C-R-O-I-X, water.com, and I have that linked in this episode's description. I'll leave it there for today. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in tomorrow's show where your optimal life awaits.